We are back, joined by Michael again today, and you might be able to see a few of the pieces of the steam shovel. Michael is the one that rescued the steam shovel out of the bottom of Wixom Lake, and the last time we seen these, he was pulling apart the pieces, bringing it back to his house where it currently is located, and starting to work on a few of these. As you can see, there's some paint on a few of these pieces, and he's made a lot of progress. So since the last time I talked to you, what tell us the progress that you've made and, and what you've been working on. Well, I was, uh, once we got it pulled apart, I had uh, Ben Robinson from Robinson Industries there offered up a sandblaster to me. So I've been running parts out there, sandblasting, and then uh, bringing stuff home, and uh, priming, kind of going through what needed to be rebuilt. And a couple of things really didn't need painted up yet, but I did it just to give me incentive. So that's why I did the wheel. Uh, did the bucket, then I concentrated on the on the lower frame, and got the steel replaced on it. So everything is pretty much got the back half straightened out, and got everything replaced on this. It just needs to be riveted. It's just bolted together right now, and then got a coat of paint on it, and uh, and we'll just kind of keep carrying on from there. And start from the guy. Got to start. Eventually, got to start from the bottom up. I'll have to get the rest of the wheels. And the axle and everything done and then start working my way up i think the Go last the time we talked you were looking for these i-beams because they're a little bit different did you these find ones, an these ones they still made these were channel irons it's for that section over there okay. the, my two long ones i got to find the nine inch and i was really kind of hoping i was down in detroit working at a demolition site they're tearing down a, ship, a gm plant and i talked to the head of demolition there and stuff like that and says you guys haven't found any nine inch i-beams have you he no, says, no, let's go look in a pile. He said, we're at the old part of the building. We looked what they've already sheared up and there was no nines mm -hmm. there. And it's like, well, keep trying. So if anyone's watching and knows where those are. Anybody's got some nine inch I beams, give me a call. <laughs> yep. You want to go around to each one of the parts and pieces, kind of tell us uh, what it is and uh, what you've done to restore it so far. Yeah, hold on just a minute. I got the... <laughs> you got to match me. Yeah, I had to. I had to, uh, had to get my white glasses. Well, here's out mine. <laughs> I can get you another pair, five dollars from Claire's. <laughs> I looked all over for these. These were actually pink. I had to paint them. But I've got the uh, front wheel all painted up and cleaned up, so it basically it's ready to go on the machine. We're not going to do nothing with it. The front axle, then I got the everything all pulled apart on that. I've got some welding to do to build up on the ends of the spindles. And then the, the pivot shaft on that, and that's what will be painted up, and it can get slapped underneath the machine. All three steam engines are all freed up. All of them do now all roll over. So one of these will be the winter project, and I'm going to go, I am going to tackle one of these, and I do want to have one of these running on air by next by next year. The bucket was surprisingly as bad as it looked it was really still in all all good shape i had just a couple little cracks to weld up and um, after it was all sandblasted up it was surprisingly in very good shape for in the ground for 95 years front wheel or the rear wheels have got to go um i'll got to get them all cleaned up and get them sandblasted and painted Rear axle, we got everything all freed up on that and got it all pulled apart. Got all the collars freed up. Because it's normally a posi track we're in, and or you could disengage these, loosen them up and slide them out so you could just have one wheel drive. But they were they were so stuck, froze in and welded up, that's you know, that helped the situation with it getting as stuck as it did when you had posi traction. There was no way of turning it, it just wanted to go one direction. Uh, but no, uh, Sherwin Williams has uh, done me a good job on paint. We've been getting that and, uh, and slopping on there. I got the top of the with the upper half rides and the wheels ride on here is my worst part on this machine. But I found it's just going to be a matter of sitting there with the welding rod and building it all back up and grinding it flat. I took one spot and got one one little spot done just to find what welding rod is going to work the best for me. Just to fill in a lot of this pitting? Yeah, so this is the spot you already did. Yeah, this was already had a big pit in it, and I, so I filled all this area in. And, you know, it took me a few hours, but uh, 
compared to getting a new one of these where we don't know but so I figure that it's gonna be good enough like I said we're not going into production with it but you know get it get it going for show uh, got the steering all back on all freed up and rolling over so that's all back on ready to go and then uh, my uncle surprised me with making a model of the steam shovel uh, my uncle Gary Adams he lives down in Florida took him about eight months to build that he started as soon as we pulled it out in October and he had it done in eight months all built out of wood so it kind of gives me uh, he, she told me the other day he says well at least you got something you got something to look at when you're rebuilding yours <laughs> Yeah, he did a pretty impressive job. I know you're showing me even the horizontal crowd goes back and forth yeah, and everything, everything was, works it, on it. Yeah, everything is functional on it to, to move. Uh, so he did a, he did a really, he was really good at uh, making small models. So now that you got it in pieces, you see the light at the end of the tunnel and does it look more manageable than when it was sitting in the bottom of the lake bed? Yeah, it's... Uh, you know for for goals for next year and stuff like that to be able to have the bottom done sitting on all four wheels and uh you know and then concentrate on you know getting some engines done and you know, coming up a solution for that uh, we've got the boiler needs a little bit of work but it'll be that's the replacement one so we can get that put in woods cut for the house but it's still got a lot of a lot of stuff that's got to go in sandblast and the big the big thing would be in August. I plan on bringing the getting the boom hauled home, and that's really getting because that's been out in the weather, so it's getting in really rough shape, and I got to get that sandblasted and get that primered. So and that's still at the Engine and Association, yeah. which I think there's an event coming up this weekend, isn't yeah. there? So you'll be out there probably showing a bunch more of this stuff. Yeah, people want to come out and see. Yeah, most for that. And then it's all coming, all coming back home because it's it's so much easier just to work on it in my own shop and just kind of keep going at it. And do you do any other shows besides the Midland Antique Engine Association? Or no, that's the main uh, one you've been doing. No, we I I'll go down to the um, antique store down at the end here, and then uh, set up down there just to, for show and tell because he is a a grandson of the owner, so we will sit down there to the vintage boneyard antiques and usually once a year so what is the biggest project that you're currently working on here the biggest one right now is going to be the boom that's going to be the as soon as, as soon as we get done in august when i get that hauled home and that's going to be we'll see how much it's going to be because this is pretty much done i mean this can go in the shed for right now and or sit in the shop and you know when you get get a chance get a nice day and sit there and and do some welding on it and and some grinding you still got to do the casting on the drive gear as well or yep i've still got a couple couple of gears uh i got to get back in contact the guy said it to and lives up in gladwin said it to you he'll make me patterns um so i got to get in contact with him i've got a i got a notebook in the house with with names of people that said that they you know, we can help here help there and and then i did a little bit of trading with uh one of the guys from the Mason Steam Club down there, I purchased a boat motor and I got it freed up and traded it because he was looking for one. So I've got some parts that I'm going to need for this eventually, uh, a steam injector for putting water into the boiler. And then I, he also had an inje oil injection pump that puts oil into the steam lines to oil mm -hmm. all three engines. So that was one thing we never found when we were down there on the lake. So I'm gradually picking up other parts that's going to be needed for this down the road. I know we you haven't found the serial number plate yet, but you have plans to go back out on the lake bed and potentially do some more metal detecting and look for some other parts down there again? Right now, they, they told me I still have my permit still good and I still have permission access to go down and dig. So there's still hope it could show up or maybe you'll find some more pieces of yeah, this there's loft. A, there's a, are a few pieces that uh, for the, the drive shaft carriers we're still missing one of those and a cap um, but you know anything else that we could find down there would be would be helpful but yeah a serial number plate would be be great but I'm thinking that 
if that fell off a long time ago or it's probably in somebody's garage and they have no idea what it's for and just think it's cool just to have there. Yeah, so timeline wise, what do you think timeline is to start assembly? I know you thought you said you were going to start with the wheels and getting the frame all back together and where do you go from there? Uh, I would I would say by by spring next well yeah, probably by spring I'll start assembling it. I'll wait through the winter. I won't assemble it during the winter. You know, I'll put it in storage and just keep working on parts. Then springtime will come around, then we'll start putting the wheels, front axle back in and getting it getting it set back up on its wheels where we can drag it drag it in and out. What do you have to say for the people that said this is beyond repair and to leave it in the bottom of the lake bed to them now that you are at this point and inserting the restoration? Uh, Honestly, when I first, when we first went down there, when my brother and I went down there and looked at it the first time, I literally didn't see much hope. I didn't really see anything there. But in the two hours that we were down there and looking at it, uh, whether my dad was shining through the sunlight at me saying, there is potential, somebody's got to do something with it. Well, there once you started getting it cleaned up, but yeah, there, there was clearly, I mean, it was ran when parked. So everything was there to, to make a shovel and make it go again. Do you have any other like tidbits of information, little things to share about how the steam shovel used to work? I know people like that. I know you're saying like uh, the bucket would swivel when you went to dig every now and then and that was meant to do that. And... Yeah, there was a, cause that's, I, had, I never freed up the, the, the adjustment collar on here cause it slides in a tube. And this collar here would adjust your depth, which would only, you know, I'm, I'm guessing probably you could only probably get down about 18 inches at a time. So you'd have to work, gradually work your way down. But it was locked on there. But the, the design of this with the horizontal crowd, which went out, traveled out five foot first, then up. Well, it also for a safety measure, so they weren't tearing up docks and stuff like that, is it, it would pivot if it hit something hard. And Bob Kelly says it's, it's just a... Sometimes just a pain in the rear every time that you start digging that it wants to just kind of wander around. So we'll get that. The, the back gate on it really needs uh, a lot of attention. So that's why I didn't even, I didn't even paint it. That sandblast it up where I can start working on it. But it needs, if you figure out how many times that thing banged shut, banged closed, and it, uh, it took an awful beating. So that was the worst of it on the bucket. Well, surprisingly that the bucket wasn't in good, as good a shape as it is. The, the bridle, the pins that were on here, I'm currently got them on the welding bench. I'm gonna build them back up. I'll put them in the lathe and spin them back down. And the bridle that goes back on there, I'll get it put back on there. You know, but it's a, no, I, I still enjoy coming out here and playing on the thing and, and just keep working on it. It's a, it's a very fun, for me, it's a very fun, kind of a relaxing project to play on. Yeah, you've definitely came a long way, even just the last couple months and last year or two. So we kicked her pretty hard here because the Fourth of July. I mean, I I gotta give some credit to my wife Beth and stuff like that for tolerating. Because she says, "What do you want to do for the fourth? And I says, "Well, I got three days where I can just work on my shovel. What do you want to do?" <laughs> she says, "Well, I got stuff in the house I can do." So. She did stuff in the yard and did what she wanted to do, and I kicked her pretty hard for three days to get that done, painted up, and then flipped around. So it's, yeah, she's been very supportive in this whole whole project. So as all wives are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she was hesitant at first, but uh, I, she's been very supportive. Yeah. So and I'm planning on heading down to. The August show, Bob, last time I talked to Bob Kelly, he has got the tubes in his boiler. They're supposed to hydro test it, and they're going to be having it done. So August, his stew will be ready to go, and I'm going to be down there for all three days. And that was my, I told him that was my main goal, is I'm going to help fire, oil, run, and do whatever's got to be done to the machine because he'll have both his, he'll have his Erie shovel going, and he'll have the stew going. So What show is that? It's down in Pennsylvania. It's the National Pike Steam and Tractor Show in Brownsville. It's an ex if you, anybody's into old equipment, that's all there is. It's just a bunch of old construction equipment down there. And that's all they're, they're just playing in the dirt, 
uh, it's an excellent show to go to. They have two a year. Um, I can give you the information for what, what the date and stuff like that. But August show is, is going to be one of their big ones. It's their biggest one, but it's, it's, worth the, it's worth the trip to go down there and see that if you're into heavy equipment. Any other information you want to share with us on this? I guess that's that's about all I've got so far. Uh, the support on Facebook, um, I really appreciate that. The website is up and going now. We're still making some tweaks on that. So the, the website's there for anybody that doesn't do Facebook but does web page, stuff like that, that uh, all the stuff's there. I keep, keep you updated and keep you posted up on there. I appreciate you taking the time to come out and, and film the stuff. I always appreciate you sharing your information and sharing your story of the shovel and we'll continue to follow this until it is completely rebuilt but yeah if people want to check out the day-to-day -day happenings of Michael working on the shovel he puts out a lot more updates than I do check out the links in the description down below for his Facebook and his website page. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next videos I will be posting and leave your questions, comments, and suggestions below. As always, I just want to give a massive thanks to the people who support me on Patreon. Never underestimate the value of your contribution to keeping this channel going. Thank you.